Today, we talk about... Got it. Wait, did you have another question for him? Um, it's a really dumb basic one, but is there a moment that you remember that you were like, the first moment you're like, shit, like, I'm funny? I, I, I just think it's so gradual. It's not like, I mean, there was definitely a moment where I was like, wow, that was my first good set that, like, I have a recording of this and I'm not embarrassed to show it to some mm. people. Nice. How long did it take you to get there? Uh, with the, not like at least a year. A year. Yeah. Not. I, I didn't mean in a in a stand up set. Yeah, I like mean, were uh, you growing up yeah. a class clown, or did someone tell you, "Hey, you should try stand up"? Definitely not a class clown. I mean, my friends were funny. Okay. Matt Matt Somerstein's my good friend. Oh, okay. That's my childhood gotcha, friend. He's gotcha, hilarious. Gotcha, gotcha. So like all my friends would go around and gross each other. My friends were funny, and I definitely was not the funniest one out of my friend group, but I was the most interested in stand up comedy. Got it. So it's like, it was just something I always wanted to do. And I feel like if you put enough work into it, you can be funnier than the person who's naturally funny. Exactly. I've noticed that too, because all my friends, like, dude, this guy is like, he's got the kind of humor where like, it almost feels like he you know, got a story short. He's putting that hurt. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but just, just to tout your skills, like him and my other buddy, the, the one that was in that chip video, uh, holding yeah. the camera mostly, both of them for, I don't know how they do this, but like it's almost as if they got a tape recording of what I said earlier that day and mm -hmm. spent all day coming up with like the perfect comeback, <laughs> like immediately as, as soon as I'm done talking. Cause yeah. like, it, it's kind of scary how good they are. Like I'll be, I'll finish a sentence and already he's got something like to retort with. It's just like, yeah. boom, and it's like the well, most hilarious. I'm not for Eamon, but I'm pretty sure it's the same as me, is that it wasn't, like, um, so any type of humor that developed early in me or like a sense of humor was a, kind of a defense mechanism. So it's kind of just like reactionary. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's like you look at an athlete and you're like, oh, dude, how, does, how do they know to like go up for the block at that point or to like go for the shot? And it's muscle memory type of thing. So like it's the instinct is to just... It's just yeah, reaction. absolutely. Yeah, but it's no. still impressive. I'm yeah, just but like, it's not. But, no, when you, but it's more, what is more impressive is to have it ready and on call to make strangers laugh. Right, right. That's, that's well, that it's a whole separate skill set. Yeah, it's a very separate. Skill. Anyone comics. can be casual yeah. in, in around their friends and get a pop. Yes. Okay, but to go up in a group of strangers without having any context of where they're coming from, and to go up there and honestly really brave, but I think that's that's a total different science. I don't yeah, think it's, it's a, terrible. Yeah, it's not so, an easy thing. So to I wasn't trying to say why I meant to. Say, like set up that joke yeah uh, that question was like was there one person in your circle or family that you were eager to try to get a pop at of, like to make to make laugh yeah I mean definitely my dad yeah was, same uh, man yeah cause he was just like such a tough dude and like <laughs> didn't always find that many things funny that if I could make him laugh, I was like, all right, I got something. So he was the open micer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, he was the dude with the arms crossed. Yeah. What, was he supportive of you venturing into it or no? Did you know, I kind of kept it a secret for a pretty long time. Like, I, I, I don't know if I said before, but I, like, I work with my dad every day. Yes. Yeah, so it's like a supermarket. It's like a family business. Yeah. That's what he wants me to do. He wants me to take over this mm -hmm. grocery store. I don't know if that's necessarily what I want to do, and that's why I'm doing this at night. Like, this is, like, my passion. And so, I mean, he's supportive of it as long as it doesn't interfere with yes. my work. Yeah. But he's definitely not, like, happy to have me out till 1 a.m. at a club doing mm -hmm. telling jokes about my dick and sometimes <laughs> about him, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I have a lot of jokes about my dad. I, I, like, I showed him a video before, and he thought it was funny, but, like, he didn't say anything else. Yeah. You know? Do you, do you, he's kind of like a cautious kind of approach to it, or he doesn't? I mean, he can just tell that this is like a yeah. career path that's definitely unsafe. You know, there's a lot of people that fail at doing this. Exactly, and he has a plan for you, so it's like yeah, you're kind of fucking up his plans, man. It's a little, yeah, it's a little <laughs> pressure, but I mean, I'm, at the end of the day, you kind of gotta have to do what you right, want right. to do. That's why I waited to finish medical training before I ventured into stand-up comedy. But hilariously enough, um, if it makes you feel any better, my parents still aren't like that impressed with it. They're like, all right, hopefully he'll get over this phase soon. And did he'll... they find out that you were doing stand-up, or did you tell them? Well, if you look the way you did before, I don't think they'd care. The phase that they were talking about. <laughs> no, my dad's a fan. My dad used to rock a mustache, so that wasn't a. Uh, yeah. Well, and my mom has come around to it, but you know, what's 
Is the mustache new? I think it's the, relatively new. Yeah. I don't want the mustache have you been treated? <laughs> I feel like that's the trigger. For the have you been treated differently before and after the mustache? You know what's hilarious? A lot of people have given me love because the mustache. I have people come up to me in restaurants, like beeline it to me, to shake my hand, like, dude, that's a killer mustache. It takes, like, it takes confidence. It does take. Yeah, I, I have no sense of shame. But, Mustaches yeah. are so like polarizing. So like you get support even if it doesn't look good, just for people who are like damn balls. <laughs> Yeah. But then I you'll mean, be in a park and they'll be like, don't look at Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it was scary because uh, I went to a, a concert yesterday for Alec Benjamin. I don't know if you guys uh, are a fan or not. Singer-songwriter in the John Mayer type of vein, I guess. Yeah. Um, John Mayer's my all-time favorite. I guess this kid would be my second Great. favorite. He's uh, like 24-ish, I think he oh, is. Wow. And uh, super, uh, just randomly found him on Spotify. I was a super fan of him. Um, went to his concert last night. Dude, I was surrounded by like 11-year-old girls. I was feeling pretty <laughs> uncomfortable. I was like... Yeah, I should walk around with a burka. Just <laughs> <laughs> you felt yeah, I feel very uncomfortable. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. I, I, I feel like if you're a pedophile, you're not going to be rocking a mustache, you know, because it's too obvious. Hey, some people go for that meta, like, oh, I'll be so obvious that uh, it'll that work. Like the, the kinds of dudes that like walk into a, uh, like Action Bronson used to say that uh, he would walk into a, a grocery, or not grocery store, um, I forget where, to, to uh, like an electronic store to rob them. But yeah. he would just show up in a suit thinking if he just showed up in a suit, he could just walk in and walk out. No, no questions yeah. asked. But um, what was it? Yeah, no, the, the mustache is new. I, I've only had it since October. So, oh, wow. And I started nice. stand-up in November. Yeah. yeah. And it was very meek back then. I have YouTube videos up from uh, the day I got it because I was having like a mental breakdown. I was having my medical boards the next day. Okay. And I was just like, I can't fucking do this anymore, man. I'm like, I hadn't studied for like two weeks. I was breaking down. I was like, what is this all for type of stuff? And then um, and I just did it. And I was like, all right, whatever. It's good that you're asking those questions instead of waiting <laughs> until you're like 50 and being like. Well, I sh if you want to go that route, I should have asked that question a while back. Because I remember back in 2010, I feel like I talked to you about this. Uh, way back then because back then and even to this day I still like beg him to like dude stop making movies again start making videos again I want to be a part of them until eventually I got so sick of waiting on it I was like fuck it I'll start doing it myself so now I'm now I'm doing the YouTube and the stand up and all that stuff um, but uh, but I remember back in like 2010 I was studying for my very first medical boards and I was having a breakdown then too. I was like fuck man this is so tough I want to do anything but medicine right now like every every medical student goes through this like phase and so I started exploring like either a career change or like all different types of work and then eventually I was just like I'm not going to be good at anything other than medicine so I stuck it out and thank god I did it's definitely much nicer once you're out of medical school um, yeah, yeah the schooling is the hardest shittiest part back. yeah exactly I have a career to fall back on and it's way more fun being a doctor than studying to be a doctor so of course yeah. for all the kids out there uh, for some motivation uh, but I remember in 2010 leading up to that um, board exam I was just like consuming stand-up comedy and stand-up comedy documentaries fucking just and then I started writing jokes and in my gmail draft I was just like write jokes but I never got on stage I never well, like you pursued would, it you would actually like write out full jokes no so I, I fucked up I, I a rookie mistake I would write like three words like uh, banana cream microphone and uh, yeah. and I was just like in my head I had thought of a whole funny thing which probably wasn't even that funny back then um, but uh, but then when you write banana cream microphone the next day you're looking at like banana cream yeah. microphone what the fuck was I talking about so now I try to like write out fully like what my thoughts are so that when I reference those notes later I can be like oh yeah yeah okay and yeah I'm going to switch this around make this a little more funny blah 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 how, what do, you, you? how do you usually write is that damn come on that was my last question <laughs> no I have it written down really nice you could ask me again <laughs> <laughs> and I, let me because it's like it's thorough it's got like follow ups to it. Yeah. what's your preparation like what's my preparation for do joke writing do you set time for writing or do you write when something comes to you I have a couple ways of how I do it I mean I definitely if I'm at work, I pull up a Google Doc and I try and think of things to just put down there and write tags and stuff. We won't tell your dad. Huh? <laughs> yeah, that's a, well. Sometimes he'll say something and then he'll see me typing. Like, Do you? Why did I said something wrong, didn't I? Yeah, right. But uh, yeah, definitely do that. I workshop with other comedians where I'll send them ideas and then maybe they'll send other ideas back and we'll work it into an actual idea. And then it's bringing stuff on stage listening to other comedians like they might have a great joke about I don't I don't know like some weird strange topic and you don't take their idea but you're like oh I have a joke about that also that I maybe thought of when I was 17 and I just wasn't doing stand up back then yeah. so it's definitely important to just kind of always be on your toes yeah. and if you think of anything funny always write it down because 90% of the time it's not funny so you've got to really like sift through it yeah. and find what's what works so you, you get 
basically a foundation written. Yeah. Do you then try to finesse it a little bit? And when you do have kind of something that you feel, all right, this is something material that I can use. Yeah. Do you deliver it exactly how you write it? Is that so? Do you write it again in a way that you will? Deliver? I write in like bullet point form. Okay. So like I'll level. write like a sentence that's the premise, yeah. and then a couple tags that could be two words, and that's kind of how I write. So you can I don't write in the and 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 whatever and or. So that sounds a little bit natural on stage, but I definitely the first time I'll take something on stage I will bring some notes so that I can mm -hmm. get the bit right instead of forgetting a part to it and being like, there's more to that and it would be funny <laughs> if, because it might not be funny even if you remember all of it, you know? Yeah. So, and you'll notice too when you tell a joke, you never tell the same joke the same way every single time. So like you'll start a day where you're doing four open mics and from the first open mic you'll try a joke and then by the time you've done it at the fourth spot that day, it's a not a totally different joke, but like it's, you've either found something that works yeah. or you took away something that wasn't working at all. Um, some I find sometimes is like uh, my brain will randomly go into autopilot and I'll say something and it will get a reaction. I'm like, oh shit, what the fuck was that? And I'll yeah. be like, all right, note that, add that next time and make sure I keep doing it that way. So yeah, it's like there's no right or wrong way to do it. That's why it's so important to record every single set. I, mean, I post every set, by the way. That's amazing. That's, uh, <laughs> you have a video of every single one of your every, sets? Every, I post to YouTube every, every set. That's brave. Very great. Yeah. <laughs> <Not gonna endorse it. laughs> no one, no one recommends you do that. Everyone's I probably very have like five videos total of me <laughs> yeah. doing. Comedy. No, everyone you talk to is like, do not post every fucking open mic, let alone like any of your open mic. Some people are like, only post your special. Like, oh, are you showing it to everyone? Or are you just posting it? I just then... post. I just put it up, and my audience has grown to such a level where like they'll stuff. follow along, and I could always delete it. Yeah, but I won't. Like the whole point of it for me was to track my progression. So like, mm -hmm. how cool would it be if you saw? Um, you know, Dave Chappelle, you're like, yo, this dude is hilarious, best comic ever. Holy shit, I have access to his entire catalog, like where he started, this was his first ever set, this is where he was a month in. Like, it's important to, in my opinion, to inspire like other comics, like, oh shit, like, I, I literally get these comments, like, dude, you've inspired me to get back out and try it. You know, yeah. because I'm literally not just reading this in a book of how to be funny. It's like, yeah. you're literally watching me go from not funny to, holy shit, the same joke now is killing. You know? So. I got you. It, it's not even that I don't want to, like, put my videos online because of, like, I think someone might think it sucks because people are seeing me in person and seeing me do shitty jokes anyway. <laughs> but it's the fact that, like, if you want people to come out and see you at a show, you don't want them to have seen any of Agreed, stuff. agreed. But, uh... To be fair, a lot, a lot of people will, even the shoe, shoe videos and stuff I do, I'll, I'll address certain things in the videos that they'll still ask me questions about in the comment section. So it's yeah. almost like they're not even really fully listening all the time, yeah. not all of them anyway. Um, but I also find like the hardcore fans that follow every single thing you do, they're going to be the most supportive of you anyway. But I agree, it's, well, it's, kind, of, it's kind of a shame that uh, jokes have an uh, expiration date because it's not, not like music that it gets better with age or like you want to hear the classic hits when you go see somebody it's like yeah I mean sometimes there are but there are certain jokes that you write them and the whole joke is that you don't know how it ends right right and so yeah the surprise is the that, punch you know, yeah. yeah so I mean there's definitely that and like yeah. you don't you don't want them to know right, how your agree. set goes. Yeah, I mean, the other part of it too is, at least for me personally, it's like I'm not at the level yet where I'm on shows yet, so I'm only doing open mics. But you will be. Uh, someday, yeah. And obviously, if if things work out, my plan is obviously that I'm continuing to get better anyway, so I'm not going to be doing the same material I was doing back then anyway, yeah. so I should be on new material by then as well. And on top of that, if I were to get to a point where I'm starting to put out specials or starting to do major shows, I could always still get all those videos and just not publish them, but then once the yeah. special comes out, I'll put out the 50 or so sets I did leading up to it so that people can still go back and like watch them. Mm -hmm. I'll probably do it that way if, if things work out. I think it's definitely cool seeing like joke progression. Yeah. Kind of like one of those like guy takes a picture of himself. Yeah, like it's basically that, yeah. And, and you'll see some people following along, oh dude, I see what you did there, that didn't work last time, it's cool yeah. that it's working this time, I see what you did. Or um, or they'll even give me notes sometimes, they're like, oh dude, maybe you should try this. That, like, is, ah. that is super helpful, people you know? giving you notes. I mean, it doesn't happen often, but, um, and, and they don't get my most views, like like my earlier ones are in the thousands, like literally wow. open mics is yeah, getting thousands of views. That's great. But, uh, but then, like usually the day I post them, they get like 30, 40 views, like whatever. Um, but consistently, if they're there, if they're up long enough, they'll hover into the multiple hundreds of views. Yeah. So, you know. Do you have like certain topics you do jokes about, or not really? I mean, it's mostly about medicine because that's you, you, my, that, that's I mean, my that's background. Good. That's like it is very good because it's something not a lot of people can relate to or create 
uh, bits about because not every comic is a doctor, yeah, you know. Exactly. So instead of the classic dick jokes all the time, it's like I have other stuff that no one else can use, so it allows me to stand out, which I'm sure you've realized is like key to comedy. Hundred percent. You know, having a joke that nobody else can tell is so amazing. Yeah. So once I get actually good, that'll be you know no, a lot of fun. I mean, yeah. yeah it's, great, it's great to do jokes about like stuff that's just personal to you yeah. and that. I've definitely had jokes where I was like, this is a good joke structurally, it gets consistent laughs. I've also heard three people tell something yep. very similar, exactly. that, like even though it gets the laugh, it's like almost doesn't feel right. like original. And at the end of the show, no one's going to remember who you were, or they'll, they'll remember that you were funny, but they're like, I don't remember a single thing from the set. At yeah, least I've noticed that. They're not going to be the whatever guy. They're, right. they're not going to remember you. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, that's the that guy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm lucky that I'm already establishing a that guy, I'm the mustache guy, I'm the doctor, I'm the fucking weirdo. Like that's... See, I, I think it's very interesting that the last couple of minutes, because it's like, yeah, you, it is cool to be able to stand out, but that's something that I, I also like go back and forth on. Do you want to be a gimmick? Because for me, I use like a, a gimmick, mm -hmm. and it's mostly a mask. It was for me yeah. because I wasn't fully comfortable with myself on stage yet and delivering stuff. So it's it's easier if you're a character. Yeah. Than if you're yourself. That is a technique. So yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying with the other opposite end is, hey, if you can be as accessible with your humor, it's possible that you're talking, anyone can say the joke, but the way you're saying it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. no one will be able to steal it because it's literally that sounding like you. you know? yeah. Yes. Yes. So Nobody can steal a joke supports. that is very personal to your life. Yep. Exactly. Which is great. That's why I'm, I'm I'm happy no one can like steal my jokes. I was talking to Matt about this because he's yeah. like, oh man, I'm, I'm hesitant to put my quote best material into tweets because then it's just available for anyone to just take, especially yeah. if it's like a very generalized joke about Uber or sex or, you know, There is that, but there's also that with Twitter where everything that you tweet out is time stamped and it like official. So if you're worried about that, I mean, if you ever want to track someone down for stealing your joke, you can. Well, if you were a big name, but if you're, you know, if you're Matt Summerstein who is, you know, doing shows and he's, 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 he's bubbling up like but that. he's still a yeah. quote open micer technically right it's, so yeah, if, if if a a-list comedian were to find that and steal that then you know who's gonna listen to who you know i don't know how often i mean i definitely had a bit that was like eerily similar to a, like a skit i saw on comedy central it sucked it really like <laughs> really bothered me that like three or four of the tags lined up and i don't know if it's oh. like sometimes you don't know subconscious man you can't maybe maybe you're not that creative or maybe it got stolen from you and Nine times out of ten, even more than that, it's that you're not that creative. And that it's parallel thinking. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's parallel thinking. No, it, like I don't, I don't understand the being on the receiving end of something getting stolen and how that must feel. But at the same time, I, I don't. The hardest part for me is like we all have access to the same information. So exactly. So like we're talking about, there's not. Yeah, there's endless amount of topics. I really don't think that, that there is like a, a limitless amount of jokes. I think delivery is probably very important. Yeah, I don't know how to what percentage to give it, but I, I just I think that like if you look at the major comedians, like if you look at Chris Rock, yeah, he's talking about different things, but it's the same genre, the yeah. same subject, yeah. race, his catalog. sex, yeah, relationships, relationships, right. stuff like that. So like it's just. But that's but that's the thing. That's like if you make it personalized to you and your way of delivery, your voice, your quirks, then that's one I think it will stand out because you'd be like, no one else would have thought to do yeah, absolutely that. Right. You know? But there is a certain nuance to being able to tell a regular joke and make it interesting and yep, yep. refreshing. Mm -hmm. yep. That's why it's like it's almost like writing jokes that everybody laughs at. It's like writing pop music. Like yep. people think it's easy, but it's not. It's right. hard to make something that everybody likes. Yeah, I'm still not there myself, but. Uh, 